Stocks declining Tuesday with weakness in cyclicals, just as the uh, two U.S. Uh, top economic officials testify before Congress. Well, let's get some analysis from Max Wolf of Systematic Ventures. Um, well, good afternoon. Welcome back, Max. Always a um, F Fed Chair Jerome Powell saying that inflation risk remains low and that price hikes uh, won't get out of hand and will not be persistent. What's your view? Well, first of all, it's just nice to see other other people broadcasting from home there for a federal government testimony. So it makes those of us broadcasting from home feel less bad when the top dogs in our business are doing likewise. I mean, I think we're basically seeing from both the Fed and the Treasury here that there's still a lot of concern about what COVID means to the global and the U.S. economy and the jobs recovery. And we've sort of started to see some uh, in the Republican Party and maybe a bunch of folks around Wall Street begin to be really concentrated on is there too much stimulus? And maybe Larry Summers, associated actually with the Democratic Party, being maybe one of the head folks crit critical of the amount of stimulus we're seeing in the pipeline here, especially with the talk of a multi-trillion dollar infrastructure plan coming. But I think we're starting to see a disconnect between what people expect of the economy, right? And I think it is sort of a story of the GDP trying to get back to where it was a year ago or so, and the stock market double where it was a year or so ago. So there's a bit of a disconnect here, and we're starting to see a political version of it in the testimony, particularly some, you know, pretty harsh responses uh, that we got from some folks, uh, you know, who are listening to this testimony, con Congress folks. Yeah, we'll talk about the valuations in a second. Now, uh, Powell said he has, the Fed has the tools to deal with uh, rising inflation if necessary, given the way that we've seen the, the markets uh, react recently, especially with bond yields uh, acting the way they are. Do you think he'll wind up using them faster than he thinks? I think it's possible. I think, unfortunately, the macroeconomic weakness is still there, right? So the stock market can decide it doesn't exist, but that doesn't actually, you know, get it. You can wish something out of your consciousness. You can't wish it away altogether, right? So my guess is the macroeconomic weakness, both in the US and, and abroad, right? So for another thing is, I haven't seen too many of the more bullish voices take any factor for the fact that Europe is now not possibly in a third wave, but is seriously locking down to confront what looks to be a pretty unfortunate and pretty high and rising series of infection and fatality rates. Now, Max Powell said that the re economic recovery has progressed faster than expected. Do you think that it's uh, growing, the U.S. economy is bouncing back fast enough or growing f fast enough to justify the prices that we're seeing for stocks one year after uh, you know, they had bottomed. No, I mean, I think I don't think anybody serious thinks these prices are justified. I think what people in the markets ask themselves is a different, more vital question in our industry, which is, could it go further? And do I want to be the guy who sits out and talks about, you know, cirrhosis while everybody's at the party of a lifetime? And that's a crappy gig on a number of levels. So I don't think it's popular to sort of be the cirrhosis scold at the frat party. But I mean, it does does feel that way and i don't i think the gdp story and the other stories kind of tell us the one thing we know for sure is that we face a future different than the one we would have had without covid and that if we're going to be at all honest we have absolutely no idea exactly what it looks like yeah well we've got you know the s p 500 uh, rising 76 percent since hitting that low in uh, march of uh last year um do we need another reset of valuations we're going to get one. We need one. I mean, the Nasdaq's at basically 2x. Yeah. So as much as the S&P is aggressive and it's repricing, I, I would say one thing, though. We're, we continue to see kind of narrow leadership here. So, yeah, it does move around. We've seen heavy rotations in and out of the tech complex, the big tech complex in the last couple of weeks. But basically, a handful of mega cap companies led by the most aggressive growers like uh, Tesla and such are overweight into these indices. And so they give people a distorted picture of the breadth of strength. Um, that being said, we have an economy that says, hey, you know, all those companies that look a little bit outdated going into COVID and had a really hard time. Most of them are coming back. You know, all those new companies that took business from them, they're going to do better, too. But we have a GDP who says there isn't more pie. Right. And then we have a market that says there's more pie for everybody. And that is normally a disconnect that doesn't end terribly well. So with these reflationary stocks having gone up as they have banks, energy, uh, industrials, you're saying that we need a further broadening out. Yeah, I think the market's trading for a brave new world where tech eats everything. But they don't seem to think that the guys whose lunch is being eaten by tech are going to get thinner. 
<laughs> right? and, and as a bean counter by nature, I suppose, I wonder if you're eating two lunches, then there's some guy out there who's losing weight, right? And the markets don't seem to think so. And the, the way we know that there's a little bit of zero sum feature in this is because the GDP is not growing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts, Max. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our thanks to Max Wolf of Systematic Ventures. I'm Fred Katayama in New York. This is Reuters.